In this video, we're going to step into my brain. We're going to get, uh, get down to some spay casting questions you all have. I promise all four of these questions are going to be spay casting related. Stay tuned. They're coming up. Hey there, YouTube family. Welcome back to Cooper Landing Fishing Guide, our, our home edition, our kind of ask a guide version. Uh, I promise I'll be out in the water soon, recording as much uh, great spay uh, footage as I possibly can here in the future. Just wanted to go over a couple quick questions uh, from, from some readers, uh, some, some viewers on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, uh, on our Instagram and other places like that. Um, also, if you love our, our YouTube videos, if you love our, our information, Definitely hit that subscribe button down below and uh, hit that bell notification. Um, feel free to email me anytime. Our email is on our website at cooperlandingfishingguide.com. Uh, without further ado, let's get into some of these questions. Our first question comes from Henry Lau. He's got a question from our last YouTube video. And he was asking if you're concerned with noise and splash of the double spay. And I think this is a great question. It kind of, you know, lends itself to many of the spay casts, even, even uh, spay casts that aren't necessarily waterborne, even some touch and go type casts. Uh, because spay casting can be used from anything from a really tiny single, you know, a, a one weight, you know, all the way up to like a 12 weight, 13 weight, whatever. Um, it, you can definitely be in, in scenarios where you're in a really small little creek and stream or you're in a huge river. Um, and kind of depends on your situation as far as how it's gonna affect your fishing. Ideally with, with spay fishing is that you're going to be casting out to a particular distance and in theory you're going to be swinging a fly uh, to fish that are going to be below you um, in a certain area. Or if you're going to be, you know, spay casting things like an indicator or uh, something more upstream, something like that. Um, the theory is that you would have, in theory, already covered that water that you're going to be making, you know, kind of your present or you're making your spay cast around. So... And also, too, your spay cast, your anchors are going to be fairly close to you, you know, within a rod length away from you, in front of you, on your right or on your left. Um, so in theory, your, your casts are going to be close to you. Um, and for us, like on the Kenai River, most of our fish don't spook all that easily. And any fish we spook in our immediate area, in theory, we would have already fished to them um, in previous casts as we were up the river a little bit further. So I hope that answers your, your question, Henry. And uh, you know, it's something we can certainly revisit later, maybe in some videos on the river. The next one also comes from YouTube. Uh, it's from Michael Dunn. He's, uh, he's got a question here. Um, he's actually fished with me before. So Mike, how's it going? We, we did some, uh, some uh, work for a local TV station, did a nice uh, piece on spay casting, which was awesome. Um, he says, I got a question. Uh, I noticed your King Salmon Intruder has no weight uh, which is kind of contrary to the norm. Um, how do you know if you're getting deep Things enough like in typically faster water? And whether you use a, a really heavy weighted fly all the way to a you know unweighted fly, um, if you really want to get down and get down kind of consistently, a lot of that has to do with casting angle and your sink tip. So, and also things like the length of your leader. So if you have an unweighted fly, you know, if you want to get deep with that, you're going to have to use a pretty short leader, you know, anywhere from two to three, maybe up to four feet maximum. So the, the, so the, the front of that sink tip gets down and that fly stays relatively even with that. If you got a really long leader, that fly is going to ride a little bit higher than your, your sink tip will ride. Um, the theory is with, you know, weighted flies, you're going to be even with your sink tip or a little bit further on your presentation. Um, so with weighted flies, you know, you can go a little bit longer leader, um, four or five, six feet. Um, not too much longer though, cause you don't want that, you know, you don't want too much inertia out there. If you've ever cast a fly um, and had a little bit lighter, you know, leader, you snap that fly off, it tends to be a little bit heavier. So you don't want it too terribly long. But the general rule is with an unweighted fly, you want to use, you want to get that fly a little closer to your sink tip to make sure it gets down. Um, a lot of my king flies are actually weighted. I'll use like a cone head or some internal kind of body weight, like on my tube flies, like my pro sport fisher tubes. Um, the one I happen to have on YouTube, which I'll link a video to up here. That one just happens to be kind of an all around king fly that I like. I'll use them on 
really heavy sink tips like T17, T20, T18, things like that, and even 15 feet of, of those sink tips in really, you know, really short leader, maybe two feet, and get that right down in the fish's face. Sometimes I like unweighted flies so they don't get stuck down in rocks, and maybe in my mind I feel like that fly is going to kind of hover over some rocks better than like a, a fly with, a, with dumbbell eyes. Um, but it, it just kind of comes from experience as far as like, you know, just how you want to fish it. And if you keep getting hung up on rocks, it might be a little better idea to go with a little bit lighter weighted fly to keep it up off the bottom, just enough to get right in the fish's face. So I hope that helps Mike. And that kind of applies to, you know, all, all flies that you'll be swinging, um, you know, with a leader uh, and any time you want to get it down. Um, the next one comes from Michael Beck. Uh, this was a, a question on our, our previous YouTube video as well. He says, I love your videos and I'm just wondering if, if if and when you do more videos, uh, if you'll explain in a bit in depth, you know, on how you set up a spay rod with a line weight, leaders, tippets, all that kind of stuff in combination and which will really help, you know, how do you get more distance, um, get the line to lay over properly kind of with those setups. And he's asking for maybe a little bit more of the technical side of figuring out how to make it work um, a bit better than just kind of by the manufactured specs. And this may not be the answer that you want, uh, Michael. I'm going to try to answer it as best as I can. Um, there's certain grain windows that your rod can handle, whether it's for sk Skagit lines, Scandinavian lines, mid bellies, long bellies, and things like that. Um, it's great to be inside those grain windows for sure, and, and you know, matching that with like your sink tip or your leader or your fly to kind of make sure all that in combination will cast well for you. If you're within the, the, the appropriate grain window for your rod, um, the best way to get things to technically cast further and technically cast straighter, a lot of it is in your form. One of the first things that I would suggest, and I learned this from Mark Huber, um, he really taught me, you know, how to, you know, to really slow way, way down and really allow um, the rod and the line to really do most of the work and, and it really makes for an effortless cast. So the first thing I would tell you, if you want to have, you want to get technically more distance and you want to have a more, more of a cast that lays out straight, I would say slow down until it gets really uncomfortably slow and then get just a little bit faster beyond that. That'll really help with your power application and really help with your, your staying connected the whole time. Um, so most of your distance is going to come from your technique as far as how you cast, how your hands work together and things like that. So what I would focus on is getting your anchor in a great position and slowing way, way down with, I mean, just making your sweep really, really, really slow, you know, making your cast really, really slow and even your forward cast slow and kind of make sure you're staying connected with your line. You'll notice that that line will jump right off of your rod. Another thing you can do too, you know, is also manage that overhang. So if you have, if you're in really shallow water, and you're a really tall person, you can have a little bit more overhang. Same thing if, as if you're up on a bank or you're up in a, in a boat, you want to have more overhang. So two, three, you know, up to four feet or more even of overhang. Um, as you wade out deeper, you're going to want less and less overhang. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can even have, the, even have the head of the line into the, into the rod. But uh, I would say if you're kind of wading average, you know, shin deep and you're slightly taller, you know, five foot ten and up, um, I would say you can have a decent amount of overhang, a foot to two feet, um, and really slow that cast way down, and you'll really notice that that line will jump off of your um, your rod. So that should help with more distance, um, really slowing down and really not trying to power it out there. Similarly, you know, your the way that your line lays out, a lot of that has to do with your anchor placement and your anchor, you know, relative to, you know, are you really pivoting that anchor and, and, and making it go 180 degrees to your target? That's another thing I would watch if your anchor's laid out like this and you're coming around on your sweep, you really want that anchor pointed right at your target. So what you want to really look, look for is as you're sweeping across, that anchor really just lines up exactly where you want it to go. And that'll help, you know, get you on that path of lining that, making that line land straight as well. So those are a couple of things I would work on. Um, really focus on technique. The technical line things and, and different different length sink tips and weights of sink tips, that, that definitely does help with, with casting and accuracy and things like that. But you'd be amazed at how slowing down and really focusing on form um, instead of trying to power the line out there, how much more distance you'll actually get and how much more accurate you'll get as well. Uh, but definitely huge, huge thanks for that, Mike. I hope that answered your question. Got another question. Uh, I didn't catch the name on it, but it was from a, a post that I put on the YouTube community link. So I'll be posting on the YouTube community link on our page, which kind of gives you some updates as far as when videos are coming out or if there's any kind of new announcement, announcements and things like that. Um, 
And he was asking how to read the water and let the fly swing to an ideal target point. And the best way I can describe this is really getting to know the piece of water that you're fishing. And I, and I, this might be crazy, but I really try to visualize where those fish are in a particular run. So if I envision that a fish is out in front of me, you know, 20 feet and three feet down, I want to make sure that when I cast and as I'm swinging that I'm actually going to be able to put that fly in front of that particular fish's face and et cetera, et cetera. So what I try to do is actually envision, you know, if this is a piece of water, I don't know if this makes any sense, if this is my run and this is kind of the gradient of the, the, the bottom of that run, you know, like right in here would be my bucket and it would just get shallower and shallower. I hope this makes sense. This gradient, if I picture a fish right here, I want to cast here, make sure that fly gets down and is swinging right in front of that fish's face without that fly grinding on the bottom. Um, I'll try to draw some kind of uh, visual for this or, or maybe I'll <laughs> hold up a piece of paper that'll get more of a visual. But if you can kind of plot out in your head where you think the most likely places for those fish to be hanging out are, the speed of the water, the depth of the water, and you know, figuring out a casting angle, a sink tip, and a fly that can get out there straight fishing, get it down to your particular point and then get it right in front of the fish's face. That's what you really want to start thinking about is, is really visualizing where those fish are, which will help set up your casting angle. It'll help you pick your sink tip and it'll really help you catch more fish because you know, once you start figuring out where those fish like to hang, as long as you can get that fly in their zone where they want to come and strike it, you'll definitely um, get really good at that. And that's where I really like to focus on the fishing aspect more than casting. You know, a lot of the folks that I take fishing on our trips have never even picked up a two-handed rod, let alone a fly rod. Um, and so what I try to do is get them set up with that casting angle, get it sinking, get it swinging, and put them in position to catch, you know, catch fish right away. So a lot of that, you have to have a real good visual mind as far as where in the water column those fish are hanging. You know, like I said, if this is your kind of general cross section of the river, are the fish going to be down in this little bucket? Are they going to be up here on the edge? Are they going to be hovering? Um, and then being able to get that fly kind of right into that zone, right? With, you know, with giving that fish a good opportunity to, to, uh, to bite. So, and that's something too, you want to consciously think about with every, you know, step down the river. So if I start out on a run, it might be different than if I step three, four, five steps down river, I may be ended up, you know, becoming, coming to a more of a shallower area, maybe a deeper area, maybe a softer area. So really want to think about visualizing where those fish are with every sequential step down the river. So I really hope that helps out. Ho hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you guys. Um, once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, definitely hit that like, like button, the subscribe button, and uh, feel free to submit your questions below and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.